Inside the Olympic Village today, the finishing touches were being applied, ready for the arrival of almost 16,000 athletes. But whilst the village might be almost ready, it seems the security plan isn't. Only last month, G4S were telling the world that they were satisfied that everything was on schedule. I'm quietly confident that we will deliver on the objective, and the objective being that we've got a safe and secure Games and we have a trained, motivated and enthusiastic workforce, and that's certainly the direction we're heading in. But yesterday it emerged that this wasn't the case. Mr Speaker, G4S has let the country down, and we have literally had to send in the troops. One group of people, however, who won't be letting their country down are the men and women manning the gates here behind me. For they do as they're told, they do their duty time and time again. A duty that's been very much appreciated here in London. I, I just want to say how grateful I am to uh, everybody in the armed forces who's going to be helping out during the Olympic and the Paralympic Games. I know you're going to do a brilliant job. Anybody who goes to Wimbledon and sees what a, a wonderful job the armed services do in helping people, in searching people and, and getting people uh, into that venue will know that you will add a great deal of efficiency and tone to the occasion. With the Games fast approaching and the athletes on their way, the pressure is now mounting on organisers to recover from this rather embarrassing oversight. With RAF Typhoons now stationed at RAF North Holt and HMS Ocean arriving at Greenwich this weekend, the time for talking about the security plan is almost over. And what must be put into action is a plan that is now deploying more members of the armed forces than there are athletes in the village. James Banks, Forces News, London. Questions about the Olympic deployment were inevitable at today's scheduled meeting of MPs on the Defence Committee with the Defence Secretary, Philip Hammond, and the Chief of the Defence Staff, General Sir David Richards, both appearing. James Hurst is at Westminster. So, James, what was said? Well, the central message from both men was that the armed forces can do this and they can do it without affecting current operations. These three and a half thousand extra troops who are being put onto Olympic security duties, they are a contingency that was built into the plan long ago. So they haven't, for example, had to mobilise extra reservists. And the Chief of Defence Staff told the committee, this is what we're here for. The big thing for me, just to reiterate, is that everybody is firmly on side. Um, they will be properly looked after and they will be recompensed. And we will do a very good job. So uh, we are where we are. That's what you have armed forces for as a force of last resort. We've got to get on with it and make the best of it. And that question of people being properly looked after, he said, was really important to him agreeing. It was stressed, as you heard from the Home Secretary earlier, that if an individual ends up out of pocket from, say, having to cancel a holiday, that will be reimbursed to them. The other important question of money here is that the Ministry of Defence, we are told, will be reimbursed for what they call the full marginal cost of this extra commitment. Essentially, that means any extra spending shouldn't have to come out of the defence budget. So how much notice did these extra troops get about their Olympic deployment? Well, there's been something of a political wrangle about who knew what when up at the top. The sense I've got from people I've been hearing from today is certainly the armed forces knew at the very least a number of days ago that this extra deployment of the contingency troops was a very real possibility. Notice to move was shortened for those on standby at the weekend. The Defence Secretary told the committee that the actual decision, the button was pushed within the last 48 hours. That's when people were told, but he says it shouldn't have come as a great surprise to anybody involved. There was a, um, a contingency plan uh, at, with people on um, uh, notice and a reserve being held. The decision that has been taken in the last uh, 48 hours is to deploy uh, that reserve, an additional 3,500 people that now will be deployed, not held in reserve for possible deployment, they will be deployed. The arrangements to make facilities available for them for accommodation and so on have now been uh, or are in the process of being contracted. That decision has now been taken. I think that answer does illustrate that although there has been perhaps some notice to plan this, the plan is not yet fully formed. Some of those practical things, details like accommodation, still being finalised.